Welcome to Dublin, Ohio on the outskirts of Columbus. Less than 40 years ago only a few hundred people lived here. Today though the population is around 43,000 and Dublin is a city in its own right. It was also voted one of the top two intelligent communities in the whole of the USA. Our economy really is driven by high-tech type companies. If you look around Dublin you'll see corporate headquarters uh, we have nearly 3,000 businesses, but yet the average size is seven people. But they're very tech-oriented, knowledge-based type jobs. So they they are very hungry for broadband support. It's attracted large employers to the area uh, that have uh, good IT, good technology strength to them. And when you've got large businesses that are attracted to a, to a community that use that connectivity, I think it then it tends to attract the small uh, businesses as well because they want to do business with those companies. They want to be part of that networking. They want to be part of that atmosphere. As far as broadband goes, uh, that was really uh, somewhat of a reaction to a crisis at the time. We were fortunate to be served by a lot of competitive broadband providers, telephone providers. And at the time of the Telecommunications Act of 96, we had just completed our first major investment in infrastructure to the tune of about $70 million, which was a lot of money for a city our size at the time. And we had put in new roadways, highly landscaped right-of-ways, and all of a sudden that was all going to be dug up uh, as a result of the, the deregulation of the telecommunications industry. So we did some uh, planning around franchising a conduit system and then learned the value of that, then in place optical fiber, started using that for city purposes. And once we realized the value of that, we started to grow that. So that, in conjunction with all the great service that the private sector was providing, really helped us to be a very broadband-based community, and we continue to develop and build on that with our Wi-Fi system and other types of communication. The city has a phenomenal fiber network, and, and really that's the, the, the key component of what we do. Um, without the fiber network, our wireless network uh, would not nearly be uh, uh, as uh, robust as it is. We partnered with the official company who uh, installed and we franchised with them to install a multi-conduit bank system. Uh, that, in effect, uh, enables competitive companies to place their optical fiber in that conduit. So it, it does reduce the amount of digging up and disruption of the right-of-way. Uh, once, uh, in exchange for that franchise, they gave us one conduit, us the city, which then we came to realize pretty quickly, being located in several city facilities, the value of interconnecting our offices. So for institutional uses, we leveraged that a great deal for our own operations, but then, became to, then came to realize very quickly that the private sector had value and use for that as well. And in some cases, we allowed private business to connect their facilities through our fiber or allocated some of our fiber to them for their use. We have actually deployed uh, a Cisco service mesh uh, infrastructure. Uh, all of our equipment is uh, Cisco. Uh, we use uh, Cisco fiber uh, switches. We use Cisco core infrastructure. We also use their wireless mesh uh, equipment. The city uses the network on a daily, daily basis um, and we actually have virtual networks on our network that are set up specifically for the city's use. It is actually available to the public as well. Both businesses and residents can use it. Um, some people use it from their smartphones and their laptops. Other folks uh, actually install uh, signal boosting devices in their home or businesses so that they can actually uh, use this, the system as a day-to-day -day, uh, access to the internet. Um, we do charge for the service and uh, you know our, our revenue as a company uh, to monetize our investments comes really from, from two uh, distinct groups, uh, one being the, the city that we, that we partner with uh, as our anchor tenant and uh, the private sector who uh, uh, makes up our, our subscriber base. We as a city are an anchor tenant uh, in a, again, another public-private partnership with a wireless fidelity system and uh, we have covered the city's 24 square miles. We use it a lot for our municipal operations and the city actually owns 25% of that broadband bandwidth and um, the other 75% is allocated to the private partner uh, for them to roll out as private service to both businesses and residents. Our uh, infrastructure uh, provides virtual connectivity to the police officers into their internal private network. 
So it's sort of an extension of what they would be able to access and the things that they would be able to do if they were plugged into a wired network uh, sitting in their office. We've just simply extended that access capability outdoors. The city has uh, partnered with the schools uh, in a collaborative group uh, that we have formed, uh, the Broadband uh, Working Group. And some development that has come from that is we have actually built, uh, the, the extended the city's fiber network into the schools, uh, into the, the school's video surveillance system. And in time of need, uh, need or in the event of an emergency or disaster, uh, the police officers, the dispatch center, uh, as well as folks in their cruisers can actually access the uh, school's uh, video surveillance system, uh, which enhances the, the, the safety and service that they can provide to the schools. Uh, I think the city has done a great job of, of having tremendous leadership and bringing in really excellent professionals to come and, and plan uh, for the future, uh, whether it's infrastructure, and that includes uh, you know wireless and internet and all of those uh, uh, other uh, related that goes along with that, but uh, I think they've just done an excellent job of, of preparing for the future. You know, it's real important that, that you know cities understand that their investment in physical infrastructure and fiber is critical down the road if they ever uh, look to uh, expand that uh, that backbone uh, into the uh, the wireless space. Hey, the fun part about this is the infrastructure is built, and uh, I think the thing that we've learned uh, recently and in going through the uh, intelligent community forum process is that we need to leverage it more. And we're getting into some exciting uh, arrangements. We have our, um, our optical fibers connected to the Ohio Supercomputer Center. It's connected to the Ohio Academic Research Network. We call that collectively the Central Ohio Research Network. So we are interconnected to most of Ohio's colleges, universities, and research institutes. So now we're trying to connect our businesses who need it to those, at, those uh, resources and getting our schools connected to that too. So there's sky's the limit really when it comes to what we can do with that. So now we're at the stage of having fun with it. And that's, that's the exciting part. This is Guy Daniels for Connected States of America in Dublin, Ohio.